Hello and welcome once again to the Poker Tracker 4 7 Day Orientation. My name is Sky Matsuhashi of SmartPokerStudy.com and we are glad you're here for Day 2, the Results tab. Let's do this. A quick itinerary for today's video. Again, this is a do as you consume video with the idea that you have Poker Tracker 4 open and you're clicking along with everything that I'm doing. We'll start by hitting the report settings up in that top left panel. Then we'll look at the overview details in the top panel. Then we'll look at some results in that bottom panel. Finally, that overview graph. And then we'll end this video with two action steps. So let's start by getting you over to the results tab. First, click on view stats, and then you're gonna click on results. And you're gonna see a report very similar to this. We're gonna hit the report settings first. Right now we're on Wacky Wand, but if you wanna change it to a different screen name, or maybe one of your opponents analyzing their results, click choose new player and run a search for that player, hit okay to pull them up. But as you can see, we're looking at Wacky Wand's results right here. Now, one thing I like is this alias button. This allows you to connect different screen names into one. So right now what we're looking at is under Wacky Wan, I have my Wacky Wan results as well as my Frisky Misky results, and that's from the Winning Poker Network. And I really like doing this because, hey, I'm the same player regardless of the sites. I don't try to play differently as Wacky Wan versus Frisky Misky. So I like to see all of my results combined. I recommend you pause the video right now if you have multiple screen names and go ahead and create an alias for yourself before you continue on in the video. Next is the reports options. Now we're on the overview report and we're gonna stay here for the duration of this video, but there are so many other reports to look at and some of them might really help to illuminate some areas of opportunity for you, but you can do that in your off time or pause the video and go through it right now. Totally up to you, right? Now there are some settings filters right here to help you filter through your results. First is the game choice. Next is the date. You can see I'm selected on this year, but you could do a specific date, a since a date, uh, this current month, whatever you want to filter through your results. Stakes, choose the different stakes that you play it. If you play it multiple stakes, as you can see, I do. And then the bet types right here. Now this area is for additional filtering to get even more specific, to drill down even more in your results. I'm not gonna be using these or showing you these at all today, but in tomorrow's video, when we cover the statistics tab, we're gonna make heavy use of the filters. So right now you're doing as you consume, but tomorrow for sure, you're gonna learn a ton from the filtering that we'll be doing. So let's take a look at the overview details panel on the top left. You can see we got the player name, my currency won $86 so far this year. Hands played about 4,700. Hands won 663, 14% of hands that I was dealt and various other bits of information right here. Um, for any of these, you can see how when you hover over it, it turns red. What you can do is click on it and then key statistical information pops up. Of course, the definition right here, the, the full statistical name, the definition down below, and then the formula below that to help you out. So you don't necessarily have to go to the statistics menu when you're trying to figure out these ones in particular. Now, I clicked on big blind per 100 hands uh, specifically because this is a very important statistic. This is gonna tell you where your potential leaks lie. Let me show you something. Right here, big blind per 100 hands, you could see at 10 NL fast, I'm losing 21 big blinds for every 100 hands I am dealt. Now, I only played 58 hands, but this is a potential leak, right? All these other stakes, everything is lovely, profitable green, but we've got some red here, here, and here. If you're looking at a database of maybe 20,000 hands, you can see we're only at 4,700 hands. But if you're looking at a, a large database and one of the stakes that you play, you see it's highly negative win rate, that might mean you have some issues within this stake. Maybe you should spend more time playing at these stakes where you're making a lot of money, or you can work on your game at this stake to increase your profitability there, turn the reds to green positive, that's important. One other stat I wanna show you is the one win saw flop. Let's click on this. So WWSF, one win soft flop percentage, percentage of the time that a player won some money in some fashion, 
given that he saw the flop. So you see the flop and you win it by everybody folding when you bet or you win at showdown. You can see my percentage is 43%. So almost half the time when I see the flop, I end up winning. One of my goals is to get one win saw flop as high as possible. Wouldn't it be amazing if your one win saw flop was like 55, 60% and you're winning more than half of the flops you see? So these are two key statistics that I like to I like to look at as I'm going through my results. So we have the key stat information here. Just click the stat once again and it returns to the graph. All right, so let's go ahead and look at our results. Down at the bottom right here is the results panel. We have it grouped currently by stake. Now there are four different grouping methods in total. By stake, by position, by session played, or by date. The one that I always use is by position. This is what gives me the most useful information for me to start figuring out where I potentially need to work on my game. One of the things I'm always looking for is the big blind per 100 hands, and I love seeing it positive out of all the non-blind spots, and it's negative in the blinds, but that's kind of to be expected, right? Now, are these good numbers? Negative 34 big blinds per 100 hands? Negative 8 in the small blind? I would argue that they are. Let me ask you a question. If you folded every single big blind, when you were dealt 100 hands in the big blind, what would your win rate be? Well, your delta 100, you put 100 big blinds out there total. You fold them all, your win rate would be negative 100 big blinds out of 100 hands. I'm at negative 34. That's like I'm paying my big blind only 34% of the time. I'm saving my big blind 66% of the time. So my plays, whether I'm calling or three betting out of the big blind, they're more profitable than had I folded every big blind. So I really like these results. Now here, out of the small blind, if I folded every small blind, what would my win rate be? Well, it'd be negative 50 big blinds per 100 hands. I'm only at negative eight. So things are looking really good, even though they're negative numbers, still looking pretty good out of the blinds right here. Now, one thing that you can do with this report is right click anywhere within the report and you can configure the report. When you do this, you can add or remove various statistics. So earlier we had talked about that one win saw flop stat, right? Let's see what my one win saw flop is by position during this time frame. So you're gonna search for the stat name, double click it, it's gonna pop up at the bottom of the list or on the far right, on the far right along all the statistics. Let's move this up a little bit so that it's right after big blinds per 100 hands. So it's gonna be right in this spot here. Hit okay. And remember, feel free to pause the video as necessary to give you time to click along. There it is, one win saw flop. Hey, lovely 65% on the button, 62% out of the EP. That's good, along with some pretty good winnings. I love this EP stuff right here. And uh, out of the big blind, ah, uh, that's the worst, only 32%. Uh, maybe I'm calling too often and just giving up too quickly post-flop. This is a potential area, a potential leak for me to look into. But let's see something. If you double click on any of these, what it's gonna do is filter for that specific instance. So it's gonna filter hands in the early position. So 363 hands, positive 3338. Let's double click it. Now you could see the results details up here changes. I'm still wacky one, but we have the 3338 hands 363. So now these are all EP hands. And you saw that in the EP, I'm up $33. That's awesome. I wonder what big winning and what big losing hands I encountered. There's 363. If you click this column, the heading right here, you could see, ah, oh, my biggest winning hand was 15 cents. Does that make any sense? How can my biggest winning hand be 15 cents when I'm up $33? Ah, oh, I see the problem. We have it set to the most recent 100 hands. Let's switch it to all hands, and this is what you'll see once you do that. Now, oh, my biggest winning hands on 10 and L is uh, almost 120 big blinds with pocket sixes when I flopped a set. Lovely. What about my biggest losing hand? Oh, only $1.50. So this is interesting. With ace 10 offsuit, I lost 15 big blinds. But look at all these awesome winning hands. No wonder my results are so nicely positive. Now, this is one of the great things that you can do if you want to dive in to one specific um, uh, position and really try to figure out how did I make so much money in this hand? 
double click the hand, open up the hand replayer and go through it. Now we're gonna be doing this a lot tomorrow when we hit the statistics tab, looking hand by hand and seeing what your plays are, seeing any mistakes that you made, good plays that you made, mistakes your opponents are making, why you won, why you lost so much money. But this is a really good thing to do. Once you pull up a specific position, you wanna figure out, oh, what's going on? How did I win so much there? Yeah, that's great. And then you click that. Actually, we'll show you that again. Double click this. You can go back to buy position by clicking this or remove all filters and return to root. Now it's going to return us to the original results tab of about 4,700 hands. And we have it by position right here. Now let's take a look at the overview graph up top. Now it shows for your results, 4,700 hands. Um, your currency won over that time. And you know, you always want to see an upwards graph, right? You love seeing that. That means you're winning money. Yeah, sure, there are some dips and ups and downs and stuff, but in over the 4,700 hands, I'm a winner starting at zero up to a positive $86. You can see it when you hold the cursor over that right there. But here's an interesting thing that you can do. Let's say you look at this and you go, oh my gosh, I was up to $42. And I went all the way down to 25. What happened here? What like and what precipitated this gradual loss over what looks like eh, 300 hands, give or take, right? What you could do is click and drag and zoom in on one specific uh, section of the graph. Now we can see that was 300 hands where I hit a $17 buy-in downswing. And what happened here to do this? Well, let's look positionally. Oh, minus $12 out of the big blind. There was one, maybe two big hands where I lost a lot of money here. Let's actually take a look at that. We can double click this on the big blind. And we already have it sorted by money one. You can see the, the most I won out of the big blind during this time frame was $1.74. Let's sort it by losses. Eek, I lost 102 big blinds with eight six suited. Now, one of the great things I love about this report down here is without opening up the hand, I can see the basic actions that I took street by street and the actions I was facing, right? So I was dealt 8-6. Remember, this is out of the big blind, right? I was dealt 8-6 suited. There was a raise and a collar. That means I had a squeezing, a three-bet squeezing opportunity. But what I decided to do, instead of squeeze and instead of folding, I called pre-flop action right here. You can see I folded, I checked, I called uh, in these various hands. But in this hand, I chose to call after somebody else called with eight, six suited. On the flop, I raised, turned, I bet, river, I bet. And then there's the board. I only had a straight up river bluff, <laughs> you know? So you look at that and you think, oh man, I have to review this hand. What caused me to think I can push my opponent off of his hand, whatever it was that he held? Double click it to open up the hand replayer. So you can see we have the default HUD. Oh, interesting. Maybe I forgot to hit save layout in that prior video. We'll go ahead and hit it right now. Save layout right here. So let's see the action. So you can do one of two things. You can arrow through the action or on your keyboard, which is the way I like to do it, hit the arrows left and right. Right takes you through the action. Left replays or uh, reverses the action. So I'm just hitting the right arrow key right now. We got a raise, oh, a tiny raise. Oh, of course, that's why I called. Although I could have probably three bet squeezed here, but calling is not a bad play, right? Oh, so we're three way to the flop. I'm in the middle position between the two of them. Bottom pair, backdoor straight draw, weak backdoor flush draw. Not a lot going on right now, right? Oh, this guy donk bets three quarter pot. And for whatever reason, maybe because he's a loose, aggressive player, 24-16, um, he C-bets at 94%, I attempt to just bluff him off the hand to get him to fold. He folds, and then he calls. Oh, maybe I'm sensing weakness. Maybe I think he has king-queen for an open-ender, 8-9 um, uh, uh, for an open-ender, queen-8 for a gut shot, and maybe he's just sticking around when maybe he shouldn't, mathematically shouldn't. The 10 hits, well... I don't think that really helps him. Would he have, wouldn't he have folded a 10 versus my big raise? He checks. Oh, I come in for a pretty large bluff bet and he calls. Dang it, I wanted that to work. It didn't work. Maybe I should give up on the hand now. Well, the river jack hits. Two pair on the board. Jacks and tens. I just got counterfeited. I basically have a two pair jacks and tens with an eight kicker. That's my hand right now. He checks. The only way, I already know, the only way I'm going to win is to bluff at it. 
but I should have probably put him on a decent hand, something worthy of calling the flop in the turn. Not going to be scared by that jack on the river. Potentially not. I decide to shove. He calls, and then Bob's ward turns over. Ah, oh, shucks, the ace jack. Makes sense the way he played it, right? Flop in the top pair, calling the raise, calling on the turn 10. He's not scared of that. Of course, check calling, hoping I bluff for all my chips, and he caught me with the uh, full house right there. So this is a great way to learn from your hands. Look at the dip. And now the interesting thing is I had that dip where I lost a lot of money, but then look, gradual decline along the way. So maybe mentally that loss affected me and I just kept on, kept on, kept on, and kept on losing. Now, now that it's zoomed in right here, what you can do is right click and, oh, no, actually, I, I apologize. Um, go back to my position right there. Because we zoomed in, we're not going to, uh, let me show you how that works. So once you zoom in, before right clicking or before double clicking something to really drill into one position, you can right click to unzoom. And now we're back to the normal graph. Now let's take a look real quick at, hey, I went down all the way to 26, but in just a very short amount of time, I brought it all back and then some, right? Turn my losing ways around. What happened here? Well, we can take a look. We were at $26, jumped up to 37. Oh, how lovely, jumped up to 51. Now it looks like my two big winning hands, one in the cutoff, one in the EP. So just like before, if I wanna see what kind of turn things around for me, maybe turn them around results wise, but also mentally, maybe one of these two hands really uh, uh, like turned me back onto poker and made me happy and made me play well, gave me my confidence back, right? So let's take a look out of the EP, just double click it. Biggest loss was 85 cents. Biggest win. Whoa, there's that pocket sixes that we had already looked at before, right? So it's an interesting way to go through your hands and look at the ups and downs and try to learn of what's causing, potentially causing ups and downs. Maybe you have some mental game areas of opportunity to fix. All righty, now it's time for our two action steps. Action step number one, just like yesterday, was to play 200 more hands today. After today, if you play 200 and 200 yesterday, now you have 400 hands to go through. This is going to be really useful and necessary for day three tomorrow when we cover the statistics tab. And we're actually going to dive into a few of my own losing and winning hands to try to learn from my play in prior hands right here. And of course, like I said, we'll be going over the filters. And I'm going to show you a few very specific filters that might open your eyes to some big areas of opportunity that you have. The second action step is I want you to spend time viewing different reports. You saw we were just going through the overview report the whole time, but there's all those other ones to go through. Pull them up one at a time, take a look at the reports, take a look at the results at the bottom of the screen, and see if you can't find any other potential areas of opportunity, things that you can start working on right now. Alrighty, on behalf of Poker Tracker 4, this is Sky Matsuhashi saying thank you for watching, and we look forward to seeing you tomorrow for day three, the Statistics Tab.